Hi guys, welcome to AOL Build. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Good to be here. Congratulations on Hold On To Me Darling at the Atlantic Theatre Company. Um, Kenneth Lonergan, you are the playwright. Tim Oliphant, you are the star. The show is in previews. Tell me about how you found each other for this project. Yeah, Kenny, tell him. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, we, we asked him to Started do with rejection. Yeah. Go back 20 years. It oh, started wanna, with rejection. Oh, yeah. Tim uh, auditioned for a, a movie I did called You Can Count On Me in 2000. And, uh, he, he, you know, he just really didn't cut it. <laughs> um, but uh, he came very close. And then so I, now that he's a big star, we wanted to capitalize on that for the show. And... Uh, <laughs> get some mileage out of his career, um, which I didn't help earlier. So I wrote him a letter saying, remember how I didn't cast you in that movie? How'd you like to be in this play? And he wrote back saying, I sure do remember. <laughs> yeah. I think the way you put it was, I'm ready to work with you now. I think so, yeah. Anyway, so I, we asked him to, if he would consider doing the part in the play, and he, he said yes, which we were really happy about. I said, I forgive you, yeah. and I'm ready to move on. The emails are actually really hilarious, if you read them. N much funnier than the story about the <coughs> emails. I hope you'll publish them at some point. No, no, they're not that funny. Anyway. <laughs> Include them in the back of uh, the playbill. Yeah. Um, so, Tim, you have been on television, obviously, uh, a lot over the last few years. And I noticed, and in movies, I noticed you play a lot of villains, and you've played a lot of cowboy types. I feel like, I, certainly, Strings McCrane, your character in this play, is not a villain, but he's a guy with a lot of sort of demons. Yeah. And he's kind of a cowboy. Do you feel that you drew on any of the characters you've played before in Justified, Deadwood, Scream 2, <laughs> to, uh, to find this, two. this guy? Uh, no. Uh, there's very little in common other than the cowboy boots um, with those characters. I mean, this guy's kind of in crisis. His character's in a, His mother's passed away, and his life has been a fraud, and he's trying to get out of it. And he can't. You know, that's funny because I actually it's funny. See, I see some similarities, specifically the idea of going back to one's roots. To me, this play has a lot to do with what it's like for someone who has sort of rocketed into the stratosphere and is now coming back to sort of examine who he really is and who he was always meant to be. Yeah. And I see similarities in your other characters. Oh, really? Go ahead. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't really know your work. Wow. All that well. Wow. Um, no, but no, I think that's true. I think that's a valid observation. All right. I think it's a good observation. I'm not going to argue. I mean... You don't have to yell at me. I'm sorry, dude. I also love, on that same note, I love the fact that you're back at the Atlantic Theater where 20 years ago you were on stage yeah. as well. So you're going back to your roots in that way. That's been fun. You know, all kidding aside, I would like to say it's kind of a hard part to do, and it's a hard part to cast. And Tim, we're really lucky we have Tim because he's extraordinary, and he's really working hard, and he's great to work with, and he's a, he's a great guy, and he's a wonderful actor. So it's a, And it's a difficult part. He's got to go through a lot every night. Uh, and uh, he's really been working very hard, and it's really worth seeing. Can you describe for, for people who aren't familiar with the play, who haven't had a chance to see it yet, since you are only on your ninth or tenth preview tonight, right? Yeah. Can you describe the story arc of the play and a little bit about your character? I play uh, Strings McCrane. He's a uh, huge country western uh, singer star and movie star. And his, uh, his, his mama has passed away. And he is terribly distraught and is headed back home for the funeral. And he is, feels he's been a huge disappointment to his mother and wants to, wants to reorder his life and his priorities in his life and, and, and try to become the man his mom always wanted him to be. And comedy ensues. <laughs> he seems to be looking for a quick fix. He's looking for anything. I mean, he can get his hands on to make him feel, uh, how would you put it? Uh, like a like a good person. I yeah. think he's had all the worldly success anybody could want, and he's. I don't think he's looking for a quick fix so much as he's looking for a genuine fix. Mm -hmm. And one of the things the play's about, hopefully, is the double-sided edge of 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 being a big star. One 
one hand, it's everything everybody's supposed to want. On the other hand, there's definitely a very unpleasant, ugly side to it, which is, uh, and if you're not, and that's what he's struggling with, and that's what he's trying to get away from, but it's hard to get away from it. I can imagine, and, and I, I imagine there must be a certain amount of that that you pull from your own superstardom. I mean, you are a very recognizable, very successful guy playing a very recognizable, very successful guy. Do you feel that you drew on any personal conflict to, to color this character? Well, you always draw on personal, uh, your, your own life, but uh, not that in particular. I, I don't have those problems. I, I walked here. Nobody said anything to me. <laughs> I take the train. I take a subway. Yeah? Yeah. I've gotten away with it. I, I've got, I don't have those problems. No, but you're not quite as big a star as the character is. No, the, yeah, this, I mean, the character's a, a big huge, star. The huge star. A, a huge I'm not he's like, like a modern day like Elvis. Can't, can't go out he is a, the yes, kind of he is a character. huge star. Right. And, um, and so walking away from that life is extremely difficult in, in every, on every level. Um, it follows him wherever he goes, mm -hmm. and it, it just creates a tremendous chaos. And um, his his effort to try to lead a normal life is not going to come easy by any stretch. Um, I don't have that problem. Well, I have to just call you on that a little bit because you are playing yourself on a sitcom right now. Um, you have to be a pretty big star to be able to pull off... Uh, you know, making know. fun of yourself under your own name. The Grinder is what I'm talking about, by the way. Congratulations on your Critics' Choice Award, Best Guest Actor in a Thank Comedy. You. Congratulations. So there's only so much I'm going to let you get away with claiming that nobody knows who you are. Well, you know, it's all relative, but it's the, the, the I appreciate that. But uh, the, um, but this guy's a big, big star. I mean, he's made, he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and and it's a. Um, uh, we Googled my uh, uh, worth the other day, and it's not even yeah, it's not even close. It, it I don't know. At? I'm leaving a lot of money on the table, apparently. Yeah. Are you going to talk numbers? <laughs> I need, you I need to work more. I'm making it up with this play, though. <laughs> Cashing in. Man, off Broadway. Cashing in off the Broadway. Off, the off Broadway gold. The off Broadway gold is just flowing. I was like, God, I want a beach house. Oh, thank you, Kenny Lonergan. <laughs> how much is still changing about the play while you're still... This is a world premiere, by the yeah, way. Yeah, how much is changing, Kenny? Uh, we're, um, we're done now. We're done? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? For a few days, anyway. We're done. Uh, well, you know, you change and cut and add things in rehearsal, and it's uh, a little bit of a complex process because the actors are trying to part of the rehearsal process is getting away from the script and getting, detaching from the script and just doing the show with each other, uh, with them, with the other actors. So it's a little bit of a drag, I think, for them to have to deal with constant script changes and cuts, but on the other hand, the play has need, needed some work, so th they've been doing a nice job kind of juggling both of those things. You know it's not a drag, by the way. Oh, well, I mean, it, like, is it, it feels like a drag. I feel bad when I come in with it changes and the cuts and the, all that stuff. But thank you. <laughs> he does come in with a lot of stuff. Yeah. But, but no more. It's it's all, one, it's all no, but it's, it's amazing. I, I, was, I was admitting this to the cast that maybe I shouldn't admit it in front of you, but oh. it's going to be a little sad when the, when the cuts and the changes oh, really? stop could, coming in. I could keep... Well, you know, I'm, 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 <laughs> I know you could. He can't help himself. I can. I go home to cut the script and I think of more jokes. And then it becomes longer. It. But then it gets longer, and then I bring it in, and then I'm like, oh, that was stupid. It was fine before. I can't remember wh who this quote is from, but somebody said, you know, a play is never finished. It just gets produced. That's true. I think that's true of any purported work of art. You don't, you know, you finish it when you run out of time. But uh, it, there, is a, there is a point at which I begin to feel like your, your, your improvements are no longer improving it, and you're just tinkering with it, and you're kind of... Mm -hmm. At that point, I think you should stop messing around with it and figure it's going to be what it's going to be. And uh, if you want to take a look at it later on. Because it really does become about the production and the actors. And uh, at some point, I just, I just, they just can't, you know, they're trying to remember what, whether, which of the string of variations they're supposed to be saying. It's a little harder for, for them to uh, really 
lean into each other and respond and be present on stage as, as fully as they're capable of, which is, you know, that's why you hire them is because they're so good at doing that. So you kind of want to get the script settled uh, so they can really kind of take off. Yeah. We're close. How, um, how is it different than last year when This Is Our Youth was back on Broadway? Um, this is a play that has been in the canon for, since 1993. Was there any tinkering to be done on a project like that? I guess what I'm really asking is, how is putting up a world premiere of a new play different than reinventing something that's been with you for decades? Uh, it's, it's pretty different because uh, that play has been done a lot and I've seen it done a lot and I've seen it done with a lot of good casts and um, the play is very much locked. I didn't, you don't have to, I, I feel very comfortable with the script I have for years and I might have added one, literally one or two sentences to one of the characters' uh, speeches but that's it. So it's more, that's all about the production and I, don't, I just have to do much less. I just give whatever help I can as the playwright in terms of what's going on in the scenes and I don't, the, the writing part of it's well done. I mean, it's, 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 it's over. It's not well done as in cooking. It's like <laughs> just finished. Uh, and this is different because no one's ever seen the play before and it's also a little more nerve wracking for me, I guess, because I figure if the play that's already been done, that was first done in 1996 actually, uh, if the show doesn't go well, I don't feel responsible. I mean, I don't like it, but I mean, I'm not happy that it doesn't go well, but I feel like the play is what it is, and so I can let everybody else take the blame if it doesn't go too well, but in this case, like, I'm wondering if the play's as good as it ought to be, and I'm feeling very comfortable and confident about the cast, so the situation is pretty different. And 1996 is when you were last on stage. Is that correct? It's been 20 years since you had a stage something like that. Yeah. Stage job. Yeah, I lived here in the 90s and and did uh, three off-Broadway productions. One at the Atlantic. Um, so it's been a while. Um, so this has been a, it's been fun. It's a joy. I mean, I can't thank them enough. I mean, it, the whole, the whole process has been ridiculously amazing and thrilling and challenging and exhausting and and um and and it's a very rare thing to work with someone like kenny in that um this doesn't come up very often he has a uh an instinct a willingness to do things that uh at first i think that's never gonna work uh that's just a bad idea kenny someone's gotta take the typewriter out of your <laughs> hands <laughs> and then it's and then you realize not only is he serious and he's committed to it, but it's not only going to work, it's, it's brilliant. And, and that's a very rare thing to be around. Um, it's, you know, I, I've already told him I, I'll, I'll take as much time as he's willing to give me. Uh, it's been an amazing, amazing process, amazing to spend time with him. Thanks, Jim. Is there an example you can give of something you yeah, thought maybe this the won't audience work would like to hear an example. and then it worked? <laughs> There's a uh, there's a there's a thing in the play where uh, uh, the, my character strings his brother Duke. Uh, the first scene that I have with him, played by C.J. Wilson, who's amazing, uh, tells me what it. I, I'm thinking about getting a job at the local feed store. I think this might be a, the direction I want to go with my life, and. Um, CJ begins to explain to me what it would be actually like to work <laughs> in that feed store. And he has a list of all the products because he once worked there. And it is so incredible. And I thought, when I first got that list, I just thought, that's never going to work, dude. I mean, nobody's, nobody, I don't, I don't know. It just felt, it, 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 I just didn't, couldn't wrap my head around it. But not only does it work, it's incredible. Um, and it's one example, but there's a lot of that. Uh, that from the, the play in general, when I first read it, uh, I, I was like, it's a beast of a play. It's so funny, but it's played and written so seriously. Um, I, I quite honestly wasn't sure. Uh, you know, it was that wonderful thing where I felt like uh, 
I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to work, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I can do it, but I'm not sure. And that's, a, that's just a very, very fun place to be and to work from. And, it, and those opportunities to work in that space don't come very often where you're terrified and thrilled at the same time. Well, I would like to thank both of you for the um, near nudity that is written into the script. I, it's, uh, it's, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a scene at the very beginning where Tim takes most of his clothes off, and, um, and I, I just appreciated that. So I don't have a question related to that. I just wanted to say, um, nicely done I, I think all think everybody around. appreciates it, and I think, I don't know if Tim appreciates it, but he's been, He's in, he's in fantastic shape now because it's written into the script that he yes. not only he said to me, dude, not only do I have to take my clothes off, but everybody says how great I look with mm -hmm. my clothes off. So he's just been like at the gym every day. And you're now starting to look bizarrely good, I got to say. Like <laughs> Didn't you used to be a, like a pro swimmer? He started out in really good shape, by the way. The first rehearsal, where he, he wasn't shy at all. He just took off the... He's in his underwear. It's not like full nudity or anything, but it's it's worth seeing. And uh, maybe you could rewrite that part and um, just no, just no, kidding. it's distracting. <laughs> I don't believe in nudity in the theater because there's just nothing. There's literally nothing more interesting. So whenever you have a naked person on stage, you might as well just stop the show mm -hmm. and walk, watch them walk, male or female, just watch them walk around until they put their clothes on and you put the playback on. Yeah, there are different kinds of. At least that's how I feel about it. That. I don't know about other people. I was naked in my first off-Broadway show. Were you? Yeah, I was. It went great. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It's just a personal... It does, it does sell tickets. You know, uh, what can I say? Maybe it's just me. Is that, a, is that uncomfortable for you at all to, to strip down? I mean, I know it's not full, full nudity, but... No, there's so many other things you're worried about uh, when you're up on stage. Uh, that just is, uh, the whole thing is, is sort of, like I said, the whole, the whole experience is wonderfully terrifying. And um, whether, I'm, whether you're standing in your underwear or not, it's still pretty terrifying. Mm -hmm. So this character is a, is a guitar, he's a, a singer-songwriter, mm -hmm. movie star. Did you learn to play the guitar at all? There are a couple of times you pick up the guitar and start to strum. Yeah. I want to see if you can wail on that thing. Well, play? I don't. I th I think that's unfortunately all the play uh, allows. But I could jam. <laughs> if they let me, I would jam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you write a scene for that? The add it. We st you know the the opening night is still uh, a week away. You can add in a scene where he. Uh, I don't know. Free I like bird, it. dude. <laughs> I, like, I like the idea that you just see the potential and then you can imagine the rest. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. I was just curious whether you, whether you play at all in your, in your real life. There's not much there, no. <laughs> well, we have time for a few questions from the audience, if you guys are open to that. Yeah, sure. Hey. Great. Great. Uh, we're going to start with a question from an online viewer. So Marcy would like to know, Timothy, how do you keep up the energy for eight shows a week? And Kenneth, how many of those performances do you sit through each week? Less than eight. Less than eight. <laughs> <laughs> You were the name. I can answer Kenny's <laughs> question for him. <laughs> and, and, and he, with great verve, I would answer for him, eight shows a week. I don't know, it's pretty fun. It's, it, one, I mean, uh, once there's an audience there, it just sort of fills the room with energy, and the actors, it becomes part of the show. So, as tired, I'm married to an actress, and I have a, most of my friends are actors, and and I used to do plays in high school, and there's just something about being on stage that kind of, tell me if I'm wrong, kind of just, you, you're suddenly in a room with a bunch of people and they're participating in the story to some degree, and it kind of, it's hard to not have energy in a way. Yeah. Even if you feel like shit beforehand. Are you allowed to say that on, on the computer? Yeah, right? Yes. <laughs> say it on the computer. Else. That's what we're on right now, huh? We're on a computer. <laughs> we're on a computer. <laughs> yeah. You've never done a show on a computer I, before. I, I, I know, I, I, I really haven't. <laughs> yeah, there's this, I, he's right, there's this something about, you know, as soon as you step out there, you're, you're not only, you, everything, the, the other actors up there, you, there's just something so palpable about those, the, these, this live moment, this anything could happen, and the audience is there, and you're, 
you're connected to the other actors on stage as much as you're connected to the audience. It, as, as we were talking about the other night, it's, it would be untruthful to ignore either one of them. Mm -hmm. We're all there. And, um, you know, every night it's a, you know, it's a first date. Every night you're really getting to know the people from the first moment, whether they're going to come along with you, whether they're going to, if you're going to pull and bring them in or if they're going to pull you along. And it's, uh, it's, a, it, it's, it's just ridiculously fun. Well, this is the right moment, I think, to acknowledge the fantastic ensemble cast. And I know that this is something that the Atlantic Theatre Company was founded on, was great works done honestly with strong ensembles. And this play really provides that opportunity to see a whole range of phenomenal actors and performances. So congratulations on yeah, that. Yeah, it really is. A, the cast is uh, extraordinary, I think. Really wonderful and really a really nice group of people and really easy to work with, which you don't always get all of those things together. So uh, I think we're having a lot of fun trying to find out what the play is. Every character feels really well-rounded as well. None of them feel like they're just there in service of someone else. So well, I appreciate good. that as an audience member. Yeah, well, that's good. I try really hard to make sure everybody has something. Every part is a part that someone would want to play mm -hmm. and is not just a cipher or a function of another role in the play. Okay. Uh, I just think it's more interesting that way. Any other questions? Hi, uh, Timothy. I'm a huge fan of your work on uh, Justified and uh, Dead Deadwood. Um, so I wanted to ask you, like, what was it like working on uh, on that show? And uh, if you could tell us about uh, the show making a comeback. Uh, or Deadwood. What it was like working on Deadwood, or either? Yeah, uh, it was an amazing experience. Um, David Milch, much like Kenny, one of those guys. It takes you a while to wrap your head around his his process, and and that uh, you know, one of those guys who tells you an idea, and you think. Well, that's just stupid. That's just, uh, he's going to ruin it. And then you realize, not only is he not, he, that he's totally serious. It's, it's quite brilliant. And, and uh, um, so it's quite a, it was quite a thrill uh, to be a part of that. And um, I don't know, you know, every couple months I read about that they're doing a Deadwood movie. So I'm just looking forward to reading uh, when it's going to be and how much I'm getting paid. <laughs> Um, I'm off gonna off ask Broadway, you. Sally's really getting to you. This off Broadway, yeah. 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 I actually want to ask you a follow-up question about Deadwood and Justified. So Deadwood took place in South Dakota, and Justified took place in Kentucky, and this play takes place in Tennessee. How much dialect work did you have to do for each of those, and do you find yourself at all like ever reverting back to the wrong regional dialect now? I, uh, no. Uh, I felt like I'd had to do more dialect uh, uh, work for, for Justified. It was very specific, Kentucky, um, and, and not too far removed from what we're doing in, uh, from where we are in Memphis, uh, slight changes. A lot of times it's the same, more or less the same, but one or two things that uh, is, is regional. I feel like that would make it harder if it's, you know, if it's so similar. I don't know. It's, it's all pretty much... Uh, child's play so it's <laughs> pretty fun I mean I, I don't I don't find I, I don't think of it in terms of it, whether it's difficult or not it's just it just allows you to settle into something uh -huh. cool. it kind of helps you we've got time for one more question from the audience hello uh, Timothy I'm curious about what goes through your mind when you're on stage are you thinking about your next line or do your thoughts sometimes drift elsewhere my thoughts never drift elsewhere. <laughs> hmm. He's really focused. He's very focused. <laughs> he is really focused. <laughs> I feel like there's something here that's going that you guys oh, are. No, not no, no, no. He's being honest. I, I, totally true. Yeah, no. He's totally focused. What can he say? I don't think. Yeah, yeah. Let's just. No, there's. An, yeah, you're. Um, no, it's it's the whole game you're playing. Uh, is the moment you're you're just and uh that's the most fun that that's that that is the thing it is uh that's the that's there's just something wonderful about the job whether it's in theater and film or television you're the whole game is to be out of your head and in that moment and so uh if you 
if you find yourself outside of that for any second, you're, you're fucked. So you just basically have to just, from the moment they say, okay, walk out on stage, there's your first moment. Um, there's a room full of people there. I, I tend to look at them as I walk out. They're part of the conversation. They can't see them. I'm looking at them because I'm in the dark. The lights come on, and there's uh, Keith Knobs, and, and uh, I have the first moment. I tell them, I tell them what I told them not to do, and then you're off and running for two hours and forty-five minutes. It's awesome. That's with an intermission. <laughs> That's with an intermission. It's a fantastic piece. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Opening night is March 14th at the Atlantic Theater Company on 20th Street in Chelsea. Please go see it. It's fantastic. Well, thank, thank you guys you. so much for being Appreciate here. It.